very good evening to you, I'm Lisa Lord, and in our headlines, the Maritime Affairs Minister believes the issue of fish market opening hours has been resolved. An international agency has high praise for fisher folk generously helping to feed those in need. The Tourism Ministry is seeking to retrain industry workers for other sectors. And in sports, Randy Harris dismisses Jack Warner as clueless as he defends his leadership of the CFU. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC Newsnight, starting now. In our top story, Minister of the Blue Economy Kirk Humphrey says fisher folk appear to be satisfied with the hours of operation at fish markets. This, as he explained, a deeper understanding has been reached after talks with them about the reasons for modified hours under the COVID-19 directive. When we made the first adjustment and adjusted so as to suit the regular supermarket hours, we did so also for the, super, for the fish markets as well. We think it made sense. Uh, spoken to the fish vendors since then, we went through the reasons for it. The idea being to keep persons off the street at a, in a controlled fashion, and that's what we did. And having explained it to them, I think they're satisfied. Now, Minister Humphrey was speaking as fisherfolk made their latest donation to help feed some families in need during this time of COVID-19. Today, they contributed thousands of pounds of steak fish. The venture has been hailed by an official of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization who has commended the local fisherfolk for their originality and initiative in conceptualizing the project. Rianne Phillips has more in this report. Hundreds of Barbadians are expected to benefit from today's donation of a thousand pounds of a variety of fish. Fisheries officer with the United Nations FAO, Carlos Fuentevelas, says it's a model for other states. The fisher folk feeding program can be replicated. This is something that we should encourage all over the place uh, because not only it demonstrates fishers' commitment to their community, but a safe, healthy community will eventually become a self-healthy buyers. So it's an excellent program to feed our community in difficult times, but also to demonstrate uh, what fishers mean and to create that demand for later when the same people that are receiving this help can become buyers themselves. The fish donation is the brainchild of Everton Braffitt. As we go out and come in, we are going to keep donating fish all the time to people. So who get this time may not get next time. Everybody in a lake, so I try to help the less fortunate to get a little fish so that they can survive like everybody else. Um, I want to thank the boat owners, the fishermen, the scalers, the cleaner, everybody involved um, that donate fish and it's going re really well. Local officials and beneficiaries have also hailed the fisher folk's efforts. I deeply appreciate what the fisher folk is doing. I deeply appreciate what the fishermen are doing. You know, during this pandemic we said to ourselves that the fishermen are essential services too. And some people cannot have understood it probably, but fishermen are so essential to what we do. Sometimes people seem to think that you need to have some brilliant person with a degree of the highest level or having the most millions of dollars to be able to come up with concepts that will reach out and touch and turn the lives of people around. This distinguished gentleman and his team have gone to the extreme to be able to indicate when they're coming from the sea, where their lives are threatened, when the weather changes, if they run out of the petrol or whatever it is they have to use, they have put their lives, lives on the line to make sure that fish is put on the plate of the most vulnerable people in Barbados. We, the women from the Women Develop Empowerment, we would just like to say thank you for your donation of this fish. It's a great help to us in this crisis. There's mothers out there that doesn't have anything on their table. And with this contribution, we know they're going to be happy today to have something to give their children to eat. Mr. Braffitt is open to those who may want to join the cause or replicate his efforts at other fish markets. Rihanna Phillips, CBC News. 
Well, in the latest COVID-19 update tonight, eight people left isolation today after they, after they received two consecutive negative test results for the virus. This means only 13 people remain, bringing the island's total recoveries to 65. The Besto Santos Public Health Lab conducted 138 tests yesterday, of which there were no new positives. Therefore, Barbados confirmed COVID-19 cases remain at 85. To date, 3,323 tests have been completed. The COVID-19 pandemic is acting as a stumbling block as Barbados works towards achieving specific sustainable development goals. This from Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Economic Affairs and Investment, Marsha Cattle. She made the comment during an extraordinary meeting of the community of practice with Caribbean countries that are representing their voluntary national reviews at the United Nations High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development in 2020. The VNR reviews are used to measure progress towards the S. SDGs. Minister Cattle says despite the very challenging prospect of contemplating the submission of a VNR in the current circumstances, the occasion presented a key opportunity to highlight the effects of the pandemic on the SDGs. Now, while many Barbadians are still at home or working from home during the COVID-19 pandemic, hundreds of brave men and women are making a daily sacrifice to ensure that the country keeps running. We salute these Barbadians with our Newsnight series on the front line. Tonight, we feature Christopher Wood, a dedicated photographer of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. Well, at this time now, with this COVID-19, it um, is really challenging and everything, but the work still has to be done. Um, I just be here every day, on call 24-7. If anything happens, we still have to go there, um, let the public know that we are still out there. So, yeah, it's been challenging, but we're getting the work done. Have to. I have to go there every day, along with my buddy, um, Patrick. You know, we are still on the front line like anybody else. We have to be up front and center when, there, when there's any um, thing dealing with crime. Um, like, for instance, the um, car that went through the war, the war the other day, we had to um, do that. There's uh, press conferences that even before leading up to the, uh, COVID-19, we still had to, um, interviews to be, uh, to, be, to, to be done. We didn't know who is who. We don't know if anybody had it at that point in time. We be there every day. We still, we, well, it's still frightened to a certain extent because you don't know what to expect. You don't know who have it. You don't know, as they say, it is a silent, is a silent killer. You don't know. So I, I just, we still have to be aware of my surroundings, who we can in contact with. So whenever I go out, I just make sure you have my mask. Obviously, you have it right here in my pocket. The CMUs that everybody uh, will be looking at, washing, hearing, everything, we in the media have to bring that news to you. So yes, we are part of the front line. I'm Christopher Wood, and I'm definitely on the front line. The Barbados Workers' Union says a level of uncertainty still remains among workers despite the partial reopening of businesses, and the union is continuing its review of that process. General Secretary Senator Tony Moore says emphasis has been placed on ensuring the working environment is suitable. She says some companies, however, are facing challenges in securing personal protective equipment. Companies all over have been trying to source appropriate PPE and there is a lag either with respect to those being sourced locally or those being sourced from outside. So it has been a little challenging because in every respect we have not gotten it right. So then where the PPE cannot be provided, then there has to be greater emphasis than being placed on distancing and sanitizing and rotating labor and so on and in some companies based on the operation it either can't be done or can't be done easily. Senator Moore, a guest on CBC TV 8's Morning Barbados, acknowledged the fallout in the tourism sector and its impact on the workforce. Meanwhile, as some workplaces slowly reopen, human resource specialist Brittany Brathwit suggests businesses may have to issue protocols regarding transportation, especially public transport. 
um, what they expect persons to do if they are taking public transport when they get into the office, what safety net and measures are being taken when people do get to the office, even if they're using private transport, advise people on things like carpooling, um, picking persons up from along the road, all of these are little things that were normal to us, you know, two or three months ago, but we have to be cautious about doing them now. Well, the Transport Board has been addressing concerns by commuters surrounding its reduced capacity during the public health emergency. Chief Executive Officer Fabian Wharton says the Transport Board is expecting to see incremental increases in ridership given the size of its fleet and the restrictions under which the state-owned entity operates. Commuters are being told to expect some delays. The Transport Board, according to him, is working to add additional services on its shorter routes, which in turn will have a positive effect on the longer routes. Mr. Wharton reminded commuters of the strict guidelines, noting it is compulsory for all passengers to wear face masks when riding the buses. Still to come, the use of social media by some criminals in St. Lucia is landing them in jail. But before we get there, here is that tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. Keep the communication open between you and your child. Allow your child to be an active partner in their education. This parenting tip is brought to you in association with Paradox, Parent Education for Development in Barbados. Regional stories now. President of the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Warren Smith, is satisfied with the proactive stance adopted by regional governments during the COVID-19 pandemic. He believes many lives have been saved as a result. But Dr. Smith says the economic and social fallout has been profound and service-oriented sectors like tourism, which employ a large number of workers, especially women, have been particularly hard hit as a result of closed borders and physical distancing protocols. Job losses have reached unprecedented levels. Foreign exchange earnings, which are the lifeblood of our economies, especially in those service-based economies, have trickled down to near zero. Remittance flows have been disrupted and government revenues have been slashed at the same time that expenditures on COVID-related responses have skyrocketed. Dr. Smith was delivering opening remarks at the CDB as the CDB hosted a public digital dialogue entitled COVID-19 SOS Strategies for Our Societies. The CDB president reveals the board of directors has approved 143 million U.S. dollars as part of a package of assistance to help the region cope with the pandemic. In St. Lucia now, social media postings by criminals are leading lawmen to their doorsteps. Two of the latest culprits caught firing weapons in the air are now in police custody. We have a report from HTS News Force. Police investigators are expending time monitoring social media for videos featuring local acts of criminality. This as lawbreakers become increasingly brazen, posting their ill-gotten gains and guns online. One senior police officer describes this video as chilling, noting the number and caliber of firearms on display. Another video surfaced this week of two men casually firing high-powered weapons in the air. Police were able to identify the men in the video. According to police sources, the two men in the video have been arrested and are expected to be charged shortly. Here is one of the men in handcuffs. In another rant on video that did not escape the attention of the police, Simon Lubin, who I'm took to show. social media, if has been slapped with a few videos, charges for issuing threats, insulting words, not wearing a mask in public, and failing to adhere to the restrictions on social distancing. Some of those bent on breaking the law have taken to social media to promote their misdeeds but by so doing are providing the police with invaluable bits of evidence to prosecute them. 
The death of a Jamaican student pilot in Florida has been described as a major loss for young aspiring aviators. 25-year-old Mark Daniel Scott was killed after his Piper PA-34 aircraft developed mechanical problems and crashed. His instructor, who was with him, is still hospitalized with serious injury injuries.